Hey up everybody, good evening, uh, welcome to our little live stream tonight, uh, obviously as always please just let me know whether you can hear me, I think you can, Claire saying hello, how are you doing, uh, Dora's saying good evening everyone, Getting definitely becoming a little bit of a community here, so uh, um, say hello to everybody, Mika saying hi everybody, same place, same time, same people, Alison is saying hi, hi Alison, a little wavy face. Okay, you know the score on these these live streams now. Um, you understand how they run. And basically, I've got a bit of training tonight. I've got. I'm going to use quite a few slides uh, tonight just to sort of explain a couple of things and uh, things for you to look out for. And um, and then and then obviously we'll do our Q and A. So if you just want to get the training, then you can hang around for the first sort of 15, 20 minutes or whatever. If you then want to ask questions and stay for the Q and A, then you can then you can obviously. Um, hang around for a little bit longer, okay? But don't feel that when when we get to the the Q and A section, if you if you've kind of done, then um, then you can you can head off, all right? So that's that. Uh, Kathy saying hi, I can hear you now, brilliant. That's good. Uh, Monica, hi, first time I've made it to the live blog. Welcome, the first time. Uh, Mildred saying hi and a little fist this side fist pump. How are you doing? Brilliant. Okay, so we've got a few people on. Um, Tonight, we're going to talk about hidden sugars, okay? So I'm going to concentrate on, on sugars predominantly. Someone did ask about sweeteners and that kind of stuff. I'm not really going to touch on sweeteners because I'm going to do that later on, I think in a couple of days. Um, so hidden sugars is the is the H in our fresh. And then as of tomorrow, we're then going to move on to start, okay? And the first one is, um, in fact, it's tomorrow, S for sweeteners. So I'm going to do sweeteners tomorrow. Okay, but uh, but this should be quite interesting for you. Um, like I said, I'm going to use quite a few slides. Uh, how long do I see it lasting? 20, 15, 20 minutes. Um, and then obviously questions after that. What I am going to do, though, is I'm just going to take a couple of seconds. I'm trying to um, I'm trying to convert some image you don't need to know that but i'm trying to upload some pictures um to this little presentation that we use so if you just give me a couple of seconds i will be able to do that uh, i basically when i was in the supermarket before i just picked out a couple of things and i just i just quickly took a picture of the um of the ingredients list just to kind of paint a picture so i'm just going to add them to the thing I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. Uh, hopefully, if you can, it's not too off-putting. Um, but hopefully, it will improve the training a little bit. Uh, I might have to just resize that. So bear with me. Or talk amongst yourselves, whatever, whatever it is. Okay, we're done. <clears throat> right, we're done. Okay, so we're going to get into this uh, into this training. A couple of other people have jumped in as well. So, um, Eva, how you doing? Good evening to you too, uh, Pip. Don't worry about it. You're not uh, you're not laying. We um, we haven't we haven't quite started yet. So don't worry about that. And um, we've got a Facebook user. Saying hello, Craig. How are you doing? Not sure who that is. Uh, you will need to give StreamYard permission to use your name in order for me to see your name. Um, right. Okay. So we've got fourteen people on. That's good enough for me to start. So we're gonna get we're gonna get into it. Um, right. Before we start, please just give me a little bit of an intro or a little bit of a a description of of how things have gone today. Um, I know I know I've been speaking to a couple of people privately and uh, one person in particular has had an absolute nightmare um, and fallen off the fallen off the wagon so uh, that's fine you know it's going to happen or it may happen it doesn't have to happen it's not an excuse to go and throw the towel in and all that all you do is just pick yourself up and crack on because remember it's what we consistently do that counts you know if we are consistently reducing sugar and we have one day out of 30 um, which is a bit of an absolute stinker, 
we're still ahead of the game, you know, so just get back on it. Yes, you've reset all your sugar cravings and all that kind of stuff, but it doesn't matter. So what? You know what I mean? It's no point sort of going, oh, well, we're doomed. That's it. You know, just get back on it. So tell me, tell me how we're doing today um, in whatever way you want to do it. Um, Dora saying, can you make the images bigger? Yes, these this image will be bigger when I come on to do the slides like that. Okay, so, uh, so don't worry about it. Um, Ultra Dixie, are you uh, are you in? Are you have you infiltrated my group? Um, are you on? Uh, that's my running coach, by the way. If anybody wants needs a running coach, Dixie is phenomenal at what he does. He just got me through a one hundred miler. So um, even if you want to start running, run five k, ten k, um, a marathon, ultra marathon, whatever it is. He's, he's your man, okay? So you reach out to him in this group. Um, hello, Dixie. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Anne saying pretty good today. Good for you, Anne. Alison saying great today with a big thumbs up. Good for you. Um, Eve, Eve, Eve saying I'm feeling great. Maybe I can, I am fat adapted. No issues. Yeah, and you may well be. That's really good. Really, really good. Is that right, Alison? No bread. That is an absolute win if you've gone... Is this your first day, no bread? That's incredible. I remember you started off and you said, I can't imagine giving it up. Well, you now you've you've given it up for one day and a year is just a series of days, you know? So you can definitely reduce it and definitely um, definitely crack on. So fan, look at this, <clears throat> Mika, fantastic. Lost two kilograms so far and happy. Good, 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 good. So the important thing now um, is that if you suddenly just go back to eating perhaps how you were before, that's okay. You, you could probably soon put that back on. The important thing is now that we extend the amount of time that we are, we're, we're probably not fat adapted, to be honest, unless you've been doing this for a good few weeks. Okay, but you may well be in a ketogenic state and you will definitely be using more of your stored fat as energy. Okay, so, so that's good. The important thing is keep going. Um, Joanne saying good, but feeling like I need something sweet to eat. Yeah, that's a, that's quite a common one. So little chunk of 90, 85%, um, dark chocolate can help. Um, the Hartley sugar-free jelly with some, um, full fat, double thickness, extra strength cream. Um, just a small portion of that can help. <clears throat> um, what else can help? Brushing your teeth, Joe. I know it sounds a bit funny, but it does uh, it does help. So uh, maybe you can you can try that. Um, right, where do we get to? Where do we get to? Oh, I miss Steve out. How you doing, Steve? Retaining the morale, uh, the moral high grounds on the sugar monks. <laughs> Good for you, Steve. I've missed your. I've not had a chance to look in the group yet. So I've, if you've done your blog, I've missed it. But um, I'll check it out when I've uh, when when we've done this. Okay. Good. <clears throat> What's this? Uh, Joanne saying, I've lost four pounds so far, which is making me stick to it. Yeah, remember that progress in anything is the most motivating factor, okay? It's more motivating than anything else. You're just seeing your progress. So so keep it going. That's, uh, that's good. Um, blog coming at seven, right? I'll look out for that. That's good. Okay, let's get into the training a little bit. Obviously, we've, I've said we're going we're gonna to look at kind of hidden sugars of which, you know, we, we now know. Um, seeing as we are five days into into this, some of you, some of you four, um, uh, really are everywhere. You know, whenever we kind of reduce fat, we're increasing sugar. Um, our sugar taste buds are so strong now. Food is that complex with different flavors that you know it really is just just everywhere. Um, Story saying now, uh, done five days sugar free, gluten free. So please just got to keep going. I used to binge on carbs and sugar often, and it makes me feel really ill, especially gluten. I do get bored just eating meat, veg, but I feel so much better when I do. It's an interesting comment that when you are eating, and this is something that people struggle with, when you are eating well, it is boring, right? And this is why we need to find other ways to find excitement happiness, enjoyment, because instead of it revolving around some kind of food, which has got loads of neg negative 
uh, consequences, you need to find it in something else. Food just used to be fuel and it just used to be information for the body. We then, in modern day society, turned it into a form of celebration, you know, a way of easing boredom, the default setting when we've had a shit day, you know? So yes, it is boring and it should be boring, but go and find your enjoyment in other stuff. And and that's hard for some people to to hear, you know, but it's it's the reality of it, you know? So, you know, people say, oh, I want a bit of variety. No, you don't. You're kidding yourself. Because remember how many times you've been to, you know, people give me a yes if this is you. How many times you've been to a restaurant and gone, right, okay, let me have a look at the menu. I'm going to choose something different this week. Da, 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 da. And then you just order the same thing. <laughs> you know, we talk about variety, but actually each, um, the average amount of individual ingredients or foods that people eat is about 250 on average. It's not, it's next to nothing when you think about how many different types of food and brands and all that there are in the supermarkets. We tend to stay in quite a small box and just tell ourselves that we want variety. We don't. What we want is we want big dumps of dopamine, you know, to ease and change our state. All right. So um, just, to, just try and reframe it or reframe it like that. Uh, that's it. Boredom kicks in and, uh, and you go off the rails again. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. So, you know, definitely look for other ways to, to ease that boredom. Claire's saying yes. Um, she's the only one brave enough so far. Uh, by the way, I'm just going to do a little announcement. I've not really spoke to Claire about it too much, but we have discussed it. The Claire is going to become like an admin and a moderator in the group just to make sure that the questions and, and, uh, posts, don't go, don't get mixed. You know, if, if, uh, missed, sorry, if people have questions or something and it's like, I'm taking a long time to, re to reply, then Claire can, um, can jump on there. She's done feels like decades at boot camp. you know, doing a, a lot of work, you know, um, one-to-one -one work with Paula and, and some of the other coaching staff. So she's definitely like a first point of contact for a lot of stuff. So that's what's uh, that's what's happening. So hopefully you will congratulate her on that and uh, and welcome her into a, into a, her new role. Right, let's get into this training a little bit. Um, seeing there's only one person saying yes, you might get more in a minute. Um, I'm going to bring up the full screen. Hopefully you can see this. If you're watching on phone or something like that, you might struggle a little bit. But I can post these images a little bit later on uh, if you want. Right, here we go. So I just picked out. Um, I picked out three food labels um, when I went to the shop. Okay, so and and so this this is it, right? The first one. I'm gonna have to get this on my phone because I can't bloody see it on the screen either. So you can't really see it. However, trust me when it says. So this is an innocent sort of juice, right? So you might you might buy this thinking, right? I want to make a smart food choice for lunch and um, what can I have? Oh, look, this is a, an innocent fruit juice. This, this, this has got to be a good choice. Okay. So I looked at the ingredients. Um, so per, what, what is it? It's 200 and this one, 250 mils. I think this is 250 mils, this bottle. Okay. So per hundred mil is, in fact, you no point in trying to guess when it's on the screen, is there? Um, this one, in 100 ml, there is 12 grams of carbohydrates, uh, 11 of which are sugars. Okay, so remember, we you know we take off the the fiber and that kind of stuff. Um, 12 gram uh, wrong, 11 grams of sugars. I know I know we talked about this before. This is a this is a fruit juice that we would think would be would be you know healthy, but in this 250 ml bottle, we have got so 20. Um, we have got 28 grams of sugar. Now, if you think that your daily recommended allowance is about 25 grams, just this juice alone takes you well over that. What, what, what do you think to that? Do you feel a little bit duped with that? Or is it just like, well, <laughs> it's the way, you know, how, how do you feel about that? I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to put words in your mouth too much. Uh, whilst you're answering that, I'll just pull up a few more comments. Uh, Monica's saying, well done, Claire. Uh, Mika saying big thumbs up, Claire, uh, Tony Sheridan saying evening, mate. How are you doing, Tony? Um, by the way, Tony, you're looking more and more like a schnauzer puppy. Every time I see you on Instagram, what, what is going on with his beard? Um, 
Claire is saying feels like decades sometimes that she's been at camp. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's the first one. Tell me what you think. Next one that I picked up, this uh, instant porridge, it's a tiny little pot, right? Tiny little pot in there. And in that, per pot is 6.6 .6 grams of sugar, okay? Now, you might think, well, that's not a great deal, but there's only 45 grams in the whole pot, you know? It's, uh, it's, it's, just, it, it's just a crazy amount. What I, I was talking, I, there was a, a a question posed earlier on is sort of saying, you know, what about bacon and, and ham? Sometimes it has uh, multidextrose in there. And, you know, what can I do about that? That multidextrose is basically, it's it's a it's a sugar that that's comes from like, like starch and breads and stuff like that. So, um, and they add it so that, you know, it tastes a bit better. It lasts a bit longer and, and all this kind of stuff. So, um, what I say is, Ideally, we want to avoid any food that's got more than two grams in it, all right? So straight away, this is three times, I don't know why I'm showing it to the screen because you can't freaking see me right now, but this is three times um, what it's, you know, what we're, what we're trying to hit, okay? So um, in, in a little tiny little porridge that you, do, you would think would be really good. And now imagine, you know, what do you do with porridge? Or what does a lot of people do with porridge? Well, they put a bit of, a syrup in there, they put some fruit in there, they might put some sugar on top, some honey in there, and we're just layering all this all this stuff up. Um, Tony's laughing at his schnauzer schna bloody comment. Uh, Kathy's saying, well done, Claire. Uh, Mika's saying, there was, a, there was a juice test on Dutch TV. It was shocking. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can imagine, you know. And juices, I mean, they, they seem to be getting more and more popular. You know, I see... They seem to be speaking to a few people now and they're doing some kind of juice fast or um, the problem is a juice fast is rarely actually a juice fast. There's a difference between fasting and starving. You know, it, it, there, there is a real difference there. And people that are doing like a juice fast are usually doing a juice starvation because of, of what's happening in the body. They're still trigger, triggering insulin and, and that kind of stuff. Um, Dora. <laughs> that face when they cover up your cover up your eyes, uh, which is a great response to it. Claire saying you can taste the sweetness in the porridge pots as compared to rolled oat fresh made porridge. Um, it is very sweet, yeah, it is. Uh, Pip saying I've always ordered fruit drinks; they rot your teeth. Yeah, hundred percent, you know. And um, I think having nice teeth, it, it's good to concentrate on that because you know you need every reason to not eat this stuff that you can you can drag out. Uh, right. Next one is this yogurt pot. Now, this is one of these high-protein yogurts. You've, you've probably seen them already. And the reason why I picked this one out is because I thought, you know, if you're walking around the shops and you're kind of thinking, all oh, right, I want something healthy, what, what am I going to go for? Um, and, I, and I picked this one out. So per pot, you, I know you can't see that one. Um, without Googling, what do you reckon in, in one pot? So there's 200 grams in the pot. How many grams of sugar? Have a little guess for a little bit of audience participation. Um, like I said, Google not allowed. Uh, what we got here? <clears throat> so Eve saying yogurt is a massive trap. Every single one seems to contain corn flour. Why on earth would they do that? Surely we could just have runny yogurts that would no, no need to be thickened. I know it, it is. It is shocking. It is shocking what, what kind of goes on. Um, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a massive fan of food as kind of basic as it can be. You know, my, my idea of like an amazing meal would be like Henry VIII banquet, you know, where it's just meat that's got a head on it because you can you can see what it is, a fish, you know, all this kind of stuff. Right, we've got some answers coming in. So um, I'm going to run through the answers first of all. 36 grams uh, from Alison. We've got... Um, 12 grams from Claire. We've got, oh, this is a bit of a ghost. Or 25 from Mika. Nobody's got it yet. 75 from Mildred. Kathy's saying 20. We've got, I think I read 12. The 12, I think, was on the per 100 grams or whatever. Um, 12. Uh, I was eating these until this challenge. I can't remember sugar, about four grams. Uh, how many grams does the yogurt weigh? The, the, the yogurt is, is 200 mils. A milliliter of water is about a gram of 
in, in way. So there are thereabouts. Anyway, don't get too technical, Tony. We've got an answer anyway. 20 grams, Kathy. 20 grams of sugar. Again, that is marginally below your daily allowance in one yogurt. One yogurt. You know, it's just absolutely scary. Uh, okay, moving on. So, um, well done, Kathy, getting that right. So I brought these things up onto the screen um, just for you to have a little bit of a read about. And it's this idea of like food labeling. Tony's saying 20, very, very clever, Tony. He's just, I bet he's just Googled that. Um, sugar-free, what does it actually mean? So sugar-free means it's less than 0.5 grams of sugar per serving. So, you know, th there is still sugar in there. The other thing to bear in mind is let's take, cereal is a classic example. You know, the, a serving of cereal is something like 40 grams, but we never eat 40 grams of cereal. You know, we, we normally have like 100 grams or, or whatever, you know, so twice that. So even though something is labeled sugar-free, let's say you had to completely, completely abstain from sugar, it could still well be in there, you know. Um, all right, it's much, much less, but, you know, it could still well be in there. The next thing, next label is like reduced sugar or less sugar. Now, in order for a food company to label their food with this, all they've got to do it's just got to be 25% less sugar per serving. Okay, so um, Tony, you're good at maths. Maybe you can help me out with this. I think a jar of beans, um, in fact, let me just Google a jar of beans, a tin of beans. So, it means sugar. Um. <clears throat> uh, Oh, come on. Help me out. Work, work. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to work it out. So per half can, so double that. Um, I'm trying to work out what, how much sugar is in a, a tin of beans. Because the way my screens are set up, there's, there's certain parts of the thing I, I can't I can't see. Um, so there's about nine point eight grams per half can. Um, so let's let, we'll just round it up to ten. So let's say twenty. So if we've got twenty grams of sugar in a tin of beans, in order to be able to say um, reduce sugar or less sugar, it only has to be fifteen grams. 15 grams is, is still more than half your daily allowance in one tin, you know, which is just, which is just a bit, a bit scary. Um, I think they, they've actually, I think they halved it in the, uh, when they did like the reduced sugar beans, um, but there's just a, a ton of sugar in that kind of stuff. This other label, no added sugars or, or without added sugar. Um, so it just means that there's no sugar added during the processing. Okay. So if you've got, so you can have a fruit juice that is just packed full of concentrated fruit, um, which, you know, in itself is, is, is often used as a sweetener in other foods and you can just call it no added sugar without added sugar, but the sugar label is just absolutely mental. I bet you didn't even know I sneezed then, did you? Because I managed to turn off my microphone in time. Um, Eve saying, how many carbs per day should we aim for? I do keto and they recommend keeping carbs below 40, uh, 50. Yeah, yeah, 50, 50 is good if, you, if you're working to keep keto. Um, I don't know how active you are, but I, I'm not sure you'd want to go kind of too much below that. But that's, that's a good that's a good average to be aiming for if you're going keto. If you're not, if you're not, um, or like aiming for like a ketogenic state in the body, then, you know, you probably get away with, um, with, with hundred grams. I don't know. It's, it's, it's relative to you really. And your, your body size and activity levels. Um, but what I do know is people make massive changes when they, when they cut out and, and eliminate sugar. Um, okay. So moving on. I want to talk about uh, the top sources of added sugar in our diet, okay, and um, and see what those top sources are. I'm going to fly through these pretty quick, so keep the questions coming. Okay, obviously, sugar 
preserves and confectionery. So, you know, we add a ton of sugar. I've seen people in the past, and maybe you have too, in fact, tell me your horror stories of things that you've seen. I have seen people spread butter and jam on toast and then sprinkle sugar over the top. You've seen that? Uh, I think it's quite popular in Holland. I don't know. But, uh, you know, imagine the amount of grams of sugars that were layering up there. I've seen people uh, have sweetened um, breakfast cereals, you know, like sugar-coated breakfast cereals, and then put more sugar on top. Okay, so we add a lot of it. And then obviously confectionery. It used to be that we would have – my God, can I bring my face up at the same time? So I like talking to you when I've uh, when you can only half see me. Oh, you and you can't see me. Um, we used to have bloody uh, a Mars bar. I remember when I, you know, when I got a selection box as a kid for Christmas. My mum would say, "Right, stick it all in your Tupperware tub, um, and uh, and you can have one bar a day." You know, and this is what, and that felt like an indulgence, like it really did. Um, Easter egg, you know what I mean, right? You can either have one half or the insides of the Easter egg, but that's it. So it lasts a few days, you know. And this is what we did, but we we don't. We don't do that now, you know. We it, it's like massive bars of chocolate the size of the freaking laptop screen, you know. It, it's just and then and often like big bags, you know, or bags for life full of confectionery. So um, that's the obvious place to start, you know. We need to be cutting that out. Um, I picked a, I picked two or three out, two or three examples for for different stuff. Chocolate spread, fifty seven grams um, per hundred grams now. You'd like to think that you would no one would ever eat 100 grams, but I've seen people spoon feed it. I know of a, a girl, a lady, I should say, that used to put the um, put the chocolate spread into the fridge and then, uh, oh, sorry, into the freezer and then used to bloody just trot, trot. Oh, no, what did you do? Melt it with a lot. can't remember, but she was just absolutely caning in chocolate spread, which is full of really, really nasty fats as well. Um Plain chocolate, 62 grams per 100 grams. Fruit pastels, fruit pastels, 59 grams of sugar per 100 grams. You know, it's just absolutely scary the amount of sugar that's uh, that's in this stuff. Um, what do you think? Mika say, no. Is that to the, the, the Dutch? Is that the me, <laughs> me say that is, is the Dutch do this? Um, I actually saw it on a Dutch warship when I was uh, serving in the Marines and and – I saw a Dutch guy do it in the Marines. So maybe it's not common practice, but I've definitely seen it. Um, Claire said, my nana used to have Mars bar sandwiches. What? My God. Chocolate sprinkles with sugar. That's it. Yeah, Mika, I've seen that as well. Chocolate sprinkles with sugar on bread and butter. Yeah, I've seen that. Um, my dad puts shed loads of sugar on a fruit salad. Ish. Um, warm toast, butter, and chocolate spread. <laughs> you and me. Dara, come on. However, not anymore. Good. Okay. So, um, moving on next one, non-alcoholic and alcoholic drinks. Okay. We've, we've got to mention them because they are, you know, we talked about how to identify sugars before anything with an O's, anything with an aim, anything with an all on the end is usually sugar. So alcohol, it's a form of sugar, although, you know, we, we don't get any kind of nutrients or anything from it. It's, it's, it's a bit of a nightmare. So obviously, you know, gin o'clock, wine o'clock, all this kind of stuff, um, it's there, you know. And then obviously add the mixers and all that kind of stuff on, on top. Um, I don't need to labor the point too much, but it's definitely a factor. Um, next one, biscuits, buns, and cakes, iced cakes, 54 grams per 100 grams, chocolate-coated biscuits, 45.8 grams per 100 grams, um, that's quite an interesting one. Frosted cornflakes, you know, we think, oh, it's not too bad. It's only a little bit of frosting, but 37 grams per 100 grams, you know. So if you have, I don't know what the maths would be, but let's say you have twice your recommended portion, which is a tiny little, remember them little fun size packs? I think that's like a, a recommended portion size. Um, you've hit your daily allowance before you've even had, before you even finished breakfast, you know, just with frosted cornflakes. It's a lot, you know, and it's... Uh, it's out there. You can do a lot of damage in a, in a meal. We used to say, or oh, in the fitness industry, there was a common practice of having like a cheat day. Personally, I, I don't think you can have a cheat day anymore because you can just do so much damage in a day. Um, and I think even like a cheat meal is, it can be just absolutely horrific. 
Um, so next one is dairy products. We've already mentioned yogurt, um, from Arge Frey and then, then, you know, a chalk ice, you'd think like a, a chalk ice, 20, 20.5 grams per hundred grams for a, for a chalk ice. Um, a couple of other comments down here. Brandy butter, uh, brandy butter is butter and icing sugar. Oh God. I'm pretty good. I, I, I don't like that kind of stuff. So um, I'm quite lucky really, but you know, I know there are people out there that just, that is irresistible to them. Okay. And some savory foods, ketchup, 27.5 grams per hundred grams of ketchup, you know, and you sort of think, well, who's going to eat hundred grams of ketchup? Um, but you might over a week, you know, uh, my, my eldest son, he, he will absolutely smash the ass out of, out of sauces. Um, you know, he'll mix ketchup and mayonnaise together and sit there with a, a portion of chips, you know, and, 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 and it scares me. I'm like, I ain't freaking doing that in my house. You know, you want to kill yourself, do it in your own house or whatever. But you know, it is scary the amount you can put away. Uh, stir fry sweet and sour sauce. If you start adding these extra sauces, 20 Point two grams per hundred grams, and then salad cream again, sixteen point seven grams per hundred grams, which is it's still a lot. It's still a lot. Uh, I could not believe how much in semi skimmed milk. I know this. This is this is the thing, you know. And people, we've run scared of full fat milk. Some people are like, you know, when they come to boot camp, they're adamant they need semi skimmed milk because they don't want the fat. And I'm like, but. You know, do you not realize the effect that this is this the semi-skin milk is having? You know, imagine now having your frosted cornflakes with semi-skin milk because you think you're you're um, that's a healthier option. But actually, you know, all you've done is you've just increased the insulin effects even more because you haven't even got the fat in the full fat milk to calm down some of the insulin and to slow down the digestion process. Um so yeah. Uh, Pips and recommendations for milk with less sugar. Whenever it comes to dairy, if you include dairy in your diet, go for a, as full fat as you can, you know, as you, as you can. Ideally, we would all be drinking raw, unpasteurized, organic, bloody, you know, milk. But that's not for everybody. I understand that. Um, but yeah, it's, you, you're better with unpasteurized rather than um, semi skimmed and certainly skimmed because you know it, they remove the fat which which tastes great like the cream and stuff and then in order to replace the taste they'll add extra sugar so uh, yeah that's my um, that's my recommendation for any kind of dairy um, I whenever Paula likes uh, blueberries with like farge uh, yogurt and um you can get there's two varieties. There's a 0% and there's a 5% fat. You know, I always encourage you to get the 5% fat because it's marginally better, but it is, it is better, you know? So that's that. Pip, giving us a big thumbs up. Good. Thank you. Uh, right. Have we got any more slides on this? Ah, so I've picked out a few, a few areas where these hidden foods kind of lurk. Okay. Uh, I've just got them on the screen here, right? Granola bars. Again, you know, I know, um, I remember I talked to hundreds, if not thousands of people every year at boot camp about, about kind of losing weight and all this kind of stuff. And, um, you know, I went, I talked to them about swaps and trades that they do with their food and they often, they often grab a granola bar. Um, but granola bars are absolutely packed, not packed, but granola bars have got a lot of sugar in them as well. Uh, and, and food companies rely on this idea of you thinking it's a, health food and it's you know it's it's not it might be low in fat and it might give you a bit of protein and, and it might not be covered in chocolate but it, it may well be you know packed with sugar as well yogurt we've already spoke about salad dressing is a classic um or ready-made salad you know shop-bought salad dressing um, you can make some incredible salad dressings just with a bit of lemon juice, lime juice, and and uh, some olive oil. And um, quite often now, I just literally just I just squirt uh, lime juice over salads and avocado and stuff. Add some salt and pepper, and, and that's enough, really. Instant porridge we've already spoke about. Breakfast cereals and and uh, bowls of granola. Um, sports drinks and protein bars. Again, you'd sort of think right, it's a sports drink. It's like 
you know, whatever, Lucas here or whatever. Uh, and I put him back, so surely this has got to be good for you. But, you know, when you look at the amount of sugar in these things, it, it's just, they're just packed with sugar, and if not sugar, sweeteners, you know, um, which we're going to talk about tomorrow. Packaged in tin fruits, you know, you can get like a little tin of, um, of fruit, uh, fruit salad and all that, and they come in a syrup, you know, check out the amount of, of sugar that's in there. It's just absolutely packed. Um, one that's often overlooked is, uh, is coleslaw. When you're in the shops next time, just have a little look and see. Um, another one, instant tea. So when you get like, I don't mean like tea bags, but you can get like lemon iced tea as a good example and you can get some other teas, but, uh, usually they're, are packed with, with sugar. I've got dried fruit on this list because it's quite obvious that it's fruit, you know, but because we, the water has been extracted, it's, you just tend to eat so many more. You know, you might, you might like, you're never going to eat like 12 raisins. You might eat like 30, 40 raisins. Um, and the sugar in that compared to the sugar in, I mean, how many, how many grapes would you, uh, you know, would you eat in a sitting like, you know, probably, I don't know, 12, 15 grapes. You've eaten so many, so much less, um, or you've eaten so much more because it's a dried fruit. And because it's dried, you're often getting more of a glycemic hit as well. Ketchup, we spoke about uh, um, shop bought soup, like ready made soups. Some of those have, if you're not careful, have, uh, have a lot of sugar in. Um, and then pre made smoothies, we, you know, we, I shared that, that label before. So that's, that's them. Um, what's, what's your thought? What, what's your takeaways from this? You know, if you can take one thing away from, from tonight's training, um, you know, what, what would it be? Um, what, what are the things you might be wondering? Well, you know, how do you, how do you combat this? You, you've just got to be checking your labels and a couple of rules in regards to your labels. If sugar appears in the top five ingredients, okay. You, you, you need to believe in it alone. And if there's more than two grams of sugar, same again, you know, you need to believe in it alone. Simple as that. You just got to learn, learn to check them out and compare them and, and just develop a bit of a curiosity because, you know, you could, you could sort of throw the towel in with confusion and frustration and all this, but just become curious of it. And that will prevent you from being, from getting frustrated because you genuinely want to learn about it and you want to, identify where this, this stuff is. So, um, you know, get curious and, and start checking your labels and it'd be good to see some of the labels getting posted in the, in the Facebook group. If you, when you're out and about, um, to out some of this hidden sugar or these foods that are supposed health food or, or even stuff that we eat regularly, that's just full of sugar. He was saying one of my bosses buys unpasteurized milk from a farm in the same village. Amazing. I wish I had a, Sauce like that, um, I wouldn't know where to buy it. Yeah, you, I mean, some some shops, some farm shops and supermarkets over here will will stock it. I don't, I don't really know over there. You might even have a better chance of getting over it, getting hold of it over there. But um, yeah, 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 this is the thing, isn't it? You know, <laughs> two things make it make it hard. One, it's hard to get hold of. Two, it don't last as long. You know, milk in my day when I was a kid and some of you guys were kids, it'd last a couple of days and it was done, you know, now it lasts a week, week and a half. Um, so it's obviously pumped full of stuff as well. Eat fresh, avoid processed foods, go for what hasn't been messed about with. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant little takeaways there, Claire. Well done. Anyone else? And likewise, if you've got questions from this, um, or about anything else, then, then fire away and we'll, we'll tackle them as well. I definitely overestimate the amount of time it takes to to talk about this stuff. <laughs> uh, Eva saying, I live in Sutton Coffield, boss, in a village near... Ah, right, okay. Um, I need to check out your... What have I done here? There we go. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean... Yeah, you just got to hunt around, post in your, in your local Facebook groups, or whatever, and just have a little look. But I mean, fundamentally, you don't need to be going full on 
you know, that's probably maybe one or two steps down the line. Um, just, you know, avoiding skimmed, definitely. Um, and if possible, semi-skimmed and aiming for like full fat is the way to go. I know some people don't like the taste of it. I, I understand that, you know, in that regard, stick to the semi-skimmed, but skimmed milk should be like labeled with, you know, sugar juice, growth serum, sugar juice, you know, that's what it should be, what it should be called. Uh, Donna is saying when having meat such as bacon rashes or pork loin, it's okay to eat the fat. Uh, in moderation, the, the problem with that is it's, it's a saturated fat, which traditionally has always been, uh, the fat that would, you know, clog up your arteries and all this kind of stuff. Uh, there's a few bits of research been coming out of the last couple of years where it's, that's not entirely true. And, um, but one thing you definitely don't want to be doing is mixing sugar with that kind of fat. Uh, that's a, that's a pretty much a no, no. A bit of moderation, Donna. I know that fat tastes great, you know, especially when it's been like browned off in the in the in the bloody in the pan or whatever. Um, you know, it's one of those things where just allow yourself a little bit, and then some of it has got to go. Uh, I can't really give you an amount or anything like that. I tend to say with fats is like the end of your thumb. You know, it's not a right lot, but it's just enough for you to think, oh, I don't have to give up this completely if it's something that you really like. Um, I'm saying biggest takeaway, take my glasses when I'm going shopping. Brilliant. Uh, what about fruit? What's a good daily portion? Grapes, apples. Um, yeah, you gotta be careful with, with fruit. I tend to opt for something like plums or, um, or pears because they seem to be, they, they are less glycemic than, uh, than other fruits. I've just got the little brush, the little booklet here. Um, so I'm going to, a little look yeah any kind of any kind of berries except strawberries um are, are a good choice uh strawberries just packed full of sugar you know you, you've got really got to be careful with with strawberries um cherries plums pears and <laughs> it says mellow it says mellow but i think it's it's, it's meant to be melon typo there um yeah, so hopefully those give you some ideas for, for fruit. Uh, Sarah's shaking her head about full fat milk. Why? What's up with her? She's not, she not like that, that idea. Um, I had a casserole mix to my beef broth when added to my fitness pal carbs are high. I was surprised. Um, is the mix, is it a powdered mix or a liquid mix? That'd be quite interesting to have a look at that if you can um, post like the, the brand or whatever. Um, he was saying only ever once saw a note on a farm near Ashby to say that they're selling unpasteurized milk. I'd like to try it. I don't use much milk. Taste would change, but coffee black and don't use much milk. Yeah, I mean, you can you can try it. I, I don't. I wouldn't. It's not something I think you need to keep in in your diet either. But if you if you're curious, then give it a go. Let us know how you get on. Kathy's saying semi skim milk is an eye opener. I think we'll switch to full fat. I use casserole mixes too. Um, yeah, of course, the best option <laughs> in regards to dairy is to is to reduce it. You know, so yes, get onto the full fat, but ideally we want to be reducing it. I might do a thirty day dairy free challenge at some point, but um, yeah. Um, frozen what? Oh, frozen. Casserole mix. All right. It'd be interesting to see what it is. Uh, they reckon, recommend not to have grapes, apples, or bananas for diabetics due to their GI value. Yeah, I was going to say, um, I, I was going to say that, you know, they're usually incredibly sweet. In fact, I once, um, I once, uh, I used to work in, in education before I got into like the fitness industry. And uh, one day our, I used to do like the outward bounds and sports and all this kind of stuff for, for the naughty kids. And, and I got called into the office once because the, the, the secretary had passed out. She'd fainted. And um, they were saying, you know, I <laughs> doing like some first aid on all this and called an ambulance. And when the ambulance driver came, his, first, his question, she'd sort of come around there, but her question was, you know, have you just eaten a banana? And, uh, and everybody was a bit confused, but the, the ambulance driver said that, you know, it's so packed full of sugar that sometimes if you've got really low blood sugar and then you have a, like a banana or something like that, it can, you know, it has been known to cause people to faint. So, uh, 
Mika saying, I'm in. I hate milk. Good for you. <laughs> uh, dairy is my weakness. Yeah, I've got a bit of a thing for cheese. I, lo I love cheese. I usually go as hard as, with the cheese, you know, the hardest cheese that I can get really, and then just, and then moderate it. Um, but it's one of my little snicky snackies if I'm just feeling like, you know, normally I would go and have a, like a full on snack, a little chunk of cheese. It's just, you know, literally like a bite of cheese. And um, Paula goes nuts because like, my little block of cheese is some like <laughs> teeth marks in it, but uh, you know, it's one of my little, little goatees. Jo Joanne is saying, How much sugar I'm giving my kids? Do you know what, Joanne? Th this is the scary thing, you know. My my younger sister is uh, is pretty hot, you know, she's a really good parent, she's a teaching assistant, really, really good, and um, and thinking she's doing the right thing, you know, she was giving, giving my nephews, um fruit like fruit strips and fruit you know dried fruits and all this kind of stuff and, and it was just although she was working hard to avoid the usual crap that kids can be eating nowadays actually the alternative was you know it's not as bad obviously because nutritionally it's better but you know it, it's having having kind of a similar effect and it is it is scary um yeah so yeah, it's a little bit scary with the kids. You need to switch to green bananas, not ripened. Yeah. Um, they have less less sugar. Yeah, I've never. I I don't think I've eaten a banana for years. I may have eaten one on one of my ultra marathons at some point, but it's just not something I eat now. But um. Yeah, I've never, I've never had a green banana. Uh, try it. What about having lacto-free dairy products? Too much processing? Yeah, there is there is a lot of processing going there, and, and I've, I haven't really looked too much into lacto-free. Um, it's definitely going to be worth, you know, getting onto something like PubMed, where you can get some good peer-reviewed articles and, and checking it out and kind of making up making your own decision really the key thing about any dairy is if you can if you can reduce it you, you're onto a bit of a winner you don't have to completely eliminate it but you know remember it, it's a growth serum if, if you're anybody that's looking to manage weight why would you drink or why would you include a growth serum you know it just it, it just counter it um productive and yet you're saying I've avoided full fat milk for years. Thought it was doing the right thing. Not sure. Um, I would like full fat in tea. Which may... Yeah, and that's fine. You know, and a lot of people have. You know what I mean? There was there was taught. There was a big you know big campaigns that we should have um, semi skim milk. And of course, what do we do when we've got like a what we think is a healthier version? We 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 have more of it. You know, if someone's like, okay, this is ice cream, no no added sugar, reduced sugar. You just eat more of it because <laughs> you think you can. Um, either that reminds me, a friend used to spread butter and jam on a slice of cheese and eat that. <laughs> crazy, isn't it? It's crazy. Uh, Pip saying, Angie, ditto, gutted. Brilliant. Okay, we're going to start bringing this to an end. That's coming up to 50 minutes now. Um, any more questions, fire them through. If not, we're going to wrap up. So thank you for joining us tonight. Like I said, tomorrow... A um, couple of things going on tomorrow. We've got, we're about to launch our online virtual coaching and training uh, for lockdown number three. Um, we've always done kind of three free programs in the past and we're going to do free programs this time as well. Um, but that's kind of limited what, how much and the quality of what we've done. So we're also looking at introducing some paid ones as well. Um, so, and I think that works really well in a couple of different ways. One, it gives you a bit of extra accountability because you're freaking paid for it. So you're much more likely to turn up and do it. Um, and the other thing is that it will allow us to bring in other members of the team um, to, you know, to, to do it. And we can increase the quality, the number of sessions and all that kind of stuff. Um, and the other side is, you know, a lot of our staff are self-employed and they are, they are struggling, you know, um, because obviously they're not working for us now. And the other stuff that they do is, is obviously quietening down. Um, so it could be a good way to kind of support them as well. If you, if you feel that way inclined, although I know, I understand everybody's kind of feeling it a little bit. Um, Tony saying, thanks, Craig. No worries. Big thumbs up to you. Um, 
hope to see. Uh, well, I'll, I'll listen. I'll listen out for how Sarah takes the full fat milk. Okay, um, so we've pretty much dried up on, on questions there. I usually get a few thanks and see you later, so I'll just hang on for another couple of seconds, but um, we'll, we'll definitely start wrapping it up in a couple of, couple of minutes. Mika... Yeah, that's what I was actually saying. Um, what I'm actually saying is we're doing a live stream similar to this, Paula and I, tomorrow night, where we will announce this at uh, 4 o'clock, 4 o'clock tomorrow. If you can't miss it, you'll be able to watch the replay. But basically, in every group that we've got, um, this group, our virtual team bootcamp group, a couple of other little groups, we will, and the YouTube channel, Facebook page, we'll do this live stream and then announce kind of what they are. If I'm honest, we haven't truly worked out exactly what it's going to be but um you know you'll be able to find out about it there and then obviously i'll post other information as we as we uh, as we move along um if you haven't done any of the uh, the team bootcamp stuff uh usually get some really really good reviews and and uh usually a little bit different to your normal pt stuff purely because the guys that do the, the training just get through so much like if you think about it, a personal trainer in the gym, if he's doing really well, he might have six or seven sessions a day. These guys are doing six or seven sessions a day with up to 40 people from all over the world, all different walks of life, all different problems. You know, the intensity and what they learn is just so much more than, than your average trainer. So um, definitely, definitely worth looking out for that. Uh, and saying fab thanks. Uh, Claire saying thanks. Bye. Bye, Claire. Uh, Kathy saying, thank you, Craig. Very interesting. Good. I like it. Uh, Eva saying, thank you. Um, Alison saying, brilliant info as always. Thanks. And a smiley face. Chris saying, cheers, Craig. Uh, thanks, Chris. Mika saying, great. We'll watch it. Thank you for now. Donna, thank you. Dinner time now. Port line and veggies. Amazing. Brilliant, guys. Okay. Take care. And... Um, Facebook user. Is this Ultra Dixie? I don't know. Thanks, Sai, if it's you. If not, sorry, but thank you. Um, Claire saying the virtual training sessions are always great. Okay, guys, take care, and I'll uh, and I'll see you same time, same place. Uh, we're looking at sweeteners tomorrow. Take care.